Welcome to Wickerson Studios. I am following up with uh, Nathan Newfeld's Rhino tutorials that are going to happen at KCAI later this month with two Grasshopper introductory interface videos. And this I'm going to record just to try and find if I can stay on schedule for two one hour sessions uh, with a break in between. And what I wanted to get started with was, I'm just going to move my face over here, as you've obviously had the uh, ability to work with Nathan this morning uh, or this afternoon. And uh, he's set up and done Rhino the way he's, he's commonly used to, and he's gone into details of what you may be doing. But I want to alter your uh, Rhino window, maybe how he showed you, and just prepare you for how I go out, uh, go at uh, getting into Grasshopper. Now I've got some hotkeys here and I've got some extra tools and plugins, paneling tools and V-Ray up here. You're not going to have to worry about any of that. Uh, I'm going to show you basically what we'll do. We're going to keep anything we do in Rhino to an extreme minimal. But when it comes to setting up, you want to make sure you're on a Windows computer. And I want you to bring this down so you can actually start to see the command line extended. And if you're on a Mac computer, you're going to want to go to template, uh, what is it, themes, and switch over to kind of a Windows theme away from Mac, and I can show you how to do that in preferences. Chances are you're all on a Windows computer. If so, I want you to extend this command line so it's not small. I want you to be able to read what the script's been doing uh, as you process things. So if you're importing a picture, uh, say it's going to say, okay, grab a picture and bring it in here, um, uh, and then it says that you've done that. If you've gone in, typed a, you know, made a curve or a line in here, it's going to say that's exactly what you did. You had your details to what you can do. If you erase, it's going to say delete. It's going to tell you exactly that. So this will get you thinking a little more programming and what's behind the scenes in Rhino as you're working it. Uh, as for this up here at the top, I would prefer if you could move your standard bar to the front. We'll be using this uh, quite often with the right click, which is zoom extends all. And I'll just show you how that kind of works. If I go in here and make a little box, and I zoom in here, 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 hard to see because these are flat, I can go here and hit right click on zoom, it extends all viewports, and everything gets centered in those viewports. That's a little tool I want to be using quite a bit. The other one is the visibility, which is maybe over here. I want you to bring it over here. And what we'll be using is a sense of, say, making a geometry, and I'll just generate one here and uh, possibly just slide it over and copy uh, with the tap of an alt here. So I can select this one and hit uh, hide. And then this one, I can just, uh, I could hide it to that layer, or I could just swap out with this one. So what was there and what's behind the scenes. And that's a nice little technique. And if you want to show all, you've got everything to show. So I use that quite a bit as well. Viewport layout, when things get out of control, you might just want to click here and hit your viewports and get everything back. So if you've, you've made it like this, you've offset your construction plane somehow, or your world plane, you can always right click there and you'll be back to perspective, top, front, and right. The other thing I'd like you to do is actually go to perspective and set it to shaded. We will be taking it over to render in time, but I'm gonna leave it as shaded. You might notice the, the discoloration and the gradient on my tools, and I'll show you how I did that as well. Um, top view, I'd like you to click on it and go over to technical. That's always fun. Right view, you can go into pen. And uh, front view, you can go into artistic. That's always nice to set things to that. I do want you to pull this panel over so they pair, so it's not like this. I want you to pull it over so you're actually uh, taking a look at these pop-ups uh, and drop-downs. So you've got select uh, uh, points, you've got lines, curves, you've got circles, uh, ellipses, you have arcs uh, and rectangles. You have polygons and you have fillet curves, tools, which is kind of playing off of tools for those curves. You've got surfaces and then tools, uh, fillet surfaces or tools for those surfaces. You have solids, boxes, spheres. And there's a little triangle down here, arrow if you want to call it. It's more of a triangle that you could see your pop up and you can pull that in and pop that whatever you want. If you get things locked in different screens, it's best to just leave it if you're using it a lot on maybe your viewport here. But the screen's gonna get half as big when we have to open the grasshopper canvas. So then the tools for that, and then you've got your projection to planes, uh, your mesh view, uh, tools, I believe, uh, 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 conversion from mesh, uh, nerve surfaces over the poly surfaces, uh, back over to mesh surfaces. You'll be using joins and explodes, you'll be using trims and uh, uh, splits, 
and you'll be going into a little bit of grouping objects and ungrouping objects. The rest of it will get through with a little bit of analysis, jumping in and out of those icons, maybe. But the chances are you'll get in the habit of starting to type in things that you might want here, like box. And the reason I do that is when you type box, it's going to give you a choice of how to build it. But I'm going to get over to this side now and show you that I want you to have your properties up. So uh, if you typed in box, uh, you'd have properties, layers, rendering, materials. And we'll go over that if we have time. And help menu. And what's nice is if we did a box, it's going to type in box. This help menu is going to jump to it. So if I exit that and I type in circle, um, you're going to basically have that jump over to circle over here. And then you've got all your instructions of how that works if you want to go into detail. Uh, let's go back over to box. I want to show you something. Uh, the box as it comes over here, and we're starting to play off of what we want to make as that box. Um, properties are kind of nice because if we end up making that box and we don't know what we've made in the end, I just love to select this and I like to go what and then what's going to tell me uh, pretty much everything that's about that properties tab is going to go in and tell me a little specifically of what I've got going on as well. So uh, there you've got to break down everything you've made and that's going to come in handy as we start to bake objects into the Rhino uh, window. Um, and I know I haven't even opened Grasshopper yet, but just a little side note down here, and I'm covering up a few things. Uh, the one thing I'd like you to set, which is kind of handy, and I don't know if you did it in uh, Rhino with uh, Nathan, but you want to get in the habit of going here and jumping in your Properties tab, and that's where I was playing a little bit with, uh, well, my rendering, I set it back to Rhino, but um, if I wanted to jump in here and have a little bit of fun with that on Appearance, uh, you can always downside this in Colors, and you can dictate the colors of your backgrounds and play around with that and customize your screen to make sure it's nice to look at. You'll want to have that because you'll have some choices and preferences of Grasshopper, how you ghost images into the Rhino window. And this will start making sense as we get into it. The other thing I want you to do, and I shouldn't have jumped out of that, um, let's go back to the file and properties. I want you to go into down here, uh, da, 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 modeling aids, uh, go into cursor tool tips, and make sure you have distance selected. And what that's going to do is whenever you draw a line or something like that or from points, you'll see that a distance is, is calculated down here uh, just on the uh, south, uh, northeast, south, southeast side of my uh, um, uh, cur uh, target or my crosshairs. And in doing so, what's nice about that is that's going to come in handy when you want to annotate things, uh, which we may end up doing in, in a Rhino as well, but I'm not going to get too much into it. The main ones we're going to focus on are standard, zoom extent all, visibility, hiding forms, and viewport, going to viewports. We, like I said, we can get into the other tools, and drafting tools later, and I'll just jump in here and show you a little annotation, which is kind of fun. We go from here over to here, and then we can pull out that annotation. We have that exact size of what that is. But we knew that size because when we drew the line, I had my uh, file preferences, uh, oh, properties, and then I had my distance selected. Uh, and that's all I did. So let's just zoom out. This is a little more than I wanted to get into Rhino. Down here, I will have my probably grid snap off. It's not that important because I'm not working in Rhino with it. Um, I'll have my object snap on, and I can toggle that on and off, smart track and gumball. Not going to use recorded history because that's basically the thing that if you start taking interest in it, you're going to want to get into Grasshopper. So we've set our screen up. We've got properties, layers, uh, rendering materials, and help. We've got this squeezed down to two. You've got your standard visibility and viewport layout. You've got a lot to look at here, and now you can work off this shelf, off these two uh, flyouts, whatever they're called, and, uh, and then you can also uh, jump into this. Go to the standard toolbar. If you've lost this over here, by going in and it's been closed or the wrong things are open, you can go into here and select exactly the five I told you to select. And if you accidentally close it, what I do is just jump into here and I just double click here and it pops up that window on the side. Keep it to help so you know what you're doing. Once that's done, you're able to jump into Grasshopper. So that is a 10 minute little brief intro. And the tool is here, I've got a little launch Grasshopper here, but the only thing you'll have to do in Rhino after you get this initial setup, is type in the magic word grasshopper and see what happens. And there you go. You put up the grasshopper canvas. On a Windows computer, it's good to slide this off to the side, drag this down, and shrink that sidebar because you won't be needing that anymore. 
will be working probably in perspective window for most parts. So you double click on that. If you double click on it again, you go back to all four views. So I'm just going to go here and I'll probably go from here from shaded, right clicking into render, and then back into shaded. Oh, not wireframe, into shaded. And that's enough for 10 minutes to get us started on this video series. Uh, we're going to jump right in and hopefully through this next uh, hour and 50 minutes with a little bit of a break. Uh, but an hour and 50 minutes or two hours of hard working, we're going to figure out what are all these wonderful things mean up here. And even though I have it set to display text, um, your names will come up a little larger than mine. We're going to try and get through this P through D. And what that is, is parameters, maths, sets, vectors, curves. We'll try and do that in one day. And if we're lucky, we can get into surfaces, meshes, intersections, transformations, and display. All the rest are plugins I've put in along with MetaHopper and Fullogram for AR uh, and doing augmented reality. That's not important. And I'm going to try and set us up in the next video to what we want on display modes and how these nodes appear. These are past files I've had open. And uh, just for a little novelty, I want to jump in here and show you something that I'm working on, uh, learning development in C Sharp. And it's kind of the pinnacle of where I, I've been able to achieve in Grasshopper over the last uh, year and a half. And I'm just going to go in here and open up a recent file called this one. It's pretty fun and playful. We'll zoom in here. And you can have, a, you see I have a pretty interesting growth system. And here it goes. Uh, I can take it to a growth structure. Um, true, false. And I think what I want to do at this time is just take it over to render. And you'll see this wonderful growing 4D drawing mesh that's actually being created as we go. And uh, I can reset it and start again. I can change the ability of it to flatten itself if I wanted to. Uh, I can transform the collision power of it. And uh, a little tool you might want to type into, and you can see this is growing pretty fast. Um, I'm going to slow it down, bring it back, and just hit pause on the timer. And I use a tool called Turntable. And I think for those working with Windows, you're going to have fun with that. It's a nice little uh, device in here, turntable. And there we go. You've got the ability to speed it up in one direction or another. Obviously, it spins well with a few meshes, but as it starts to climb into the tens of thousands and million meshes as it grows, it's going to go a little slower. So here we go. We've got a nice little setting the timer on, seeing that spring into action. And then it slows down as it grows. So a nice little example of a custom plugin using C Sharp. We're going to start to build some scripts that maybe aren't this complex, but certainly worth having a peek at. Um, I've got this shut off, and as it's rotating, uh, we're going to build scripts in Grasshopper from left to right, which are a visual node script that will do things like this. Moving from, uh, if I took a look at all of this and turned it on, everything available, you can see what's being generated here from the initial meshes to the initial program C all the way through the mesh that's happening and then the growth system of what's been actually colored and finished. So it's a left to right script as we enter Grasshopper and it's a visual programming language that takes the command line items and the items on the side of here and on the shelf above and starts to get you thinking about how they come together. Um, and you're, we're not going to get here in this workshop by far, but we are going to go through the uh, params meshes sets, vectors, and curves to start. So thanks for joining me. We're 15 minutes in. Let's see where we can go with the param menu and getting you interface with the Grasshopper Canvas.